This is a short video explaining how we'll do the firmware updates on the QSX transceiver. Now firmware updates are required because from time to time people request new functionality and we have to release a new firmware version to accommodate that. There's also the possibility that the firmware developer might have introduced some bugs and we need to fix those bugs. Who? Me? On the existing QRP Labs kits we're using Atmel processors from the AVR family. All of these processors are in the through-hole packages and can be plugged into the kits on sockets on the boards. These chips can be upgraded if you have an AVR programmer. You could also use an Arduino for this purpose and if you don't want to do your own firmware updates you can buy the chip from the QRP Lab shop. However on the QSX we're moving to a 32-bit ARM processor. These are only available in surface mount packages and really, trust me, you're not going to want to solve that by hand, even if I was willing to sell you a new one from the QRP Lab shop. Therefore, we need to have some way of easily programming them while they're in place in the project. So this is what this video is about. This is how we, what we've developed to solve that problem. In order to avoid clones, the firmware file is also encrypted using 256-bit encryption. Now, if you know the key, it's very easy to decrypt it. If you do not know the key, it's practically impossible and requires many times the lifetime of the universe to calculate. Almost an unimaginable amount of time. So, let me explain how that works. Firstly, we have a key. In this case, the key is 248. So, once you know all of that, you can decrypt the firmware. Before we go any further, I have to demonstrate a feature of the QSX transceiver, which is how we turn it on and off. You can see on the front panel here, there's no toggle switch or anything like that. Instead, we have four buttons and two rotary encoders. Now, one of these buttons controls an electronic circuit, so it's called a soft switch. So when I press this button on the right, you'll see that it switches off the transceiver. When I press it again, it switches on the transceiver. The important point about this is that you want the radio to behave like your old analogue radios where when you turn them off and you turn them back on again, you've got it on the same frequency, the same volume, the same mode, all the settings are exactly the same as you left them because they're all analogue controlled by real switches and knobs on the front panel. Here we have exactly the same thing. If you look here and I change the frequency to 7.016, now when I turn off, it saves all the settings into EEPROM so that next time I switch on you can see I come back on the same frequency. So the first step in the firmware update procedure is to copy your new firmware file onto a USB flash drive. Here are a variety of flash drives, some old flash drives. Uh, the one I've actually installed it on is uh, this one. It's Tokyo Stock Exchange at some point, no idea why. Lost the pen that goes on the bottom of it. I've already copied three QSX firmware files onto the flash drive. Their versions 073, 079 and 085. So we'll assume in this case that we want to upgrade to version 85. Next I plug this into the USB socket on the rear of the QSX. Now the first thing I do is go into the menu by pressing a long press on the left button. Now I turn right to get to the setup menu, press again, and I go in to the upgrade menu. Now here it will show me the current firmware version. The current firmware version that's installed on the radio is 082. Now when I press the left button for select, it will allow me to select between the firmware files which are on the the flash drive. So you can see as I turn the right button it's just cycling between the three firmware file versions that are on the flash drive which is 73, 79 and 85. So assuming I want to choose uh, version 85 here I'm going to press the left button again. You're going to have to watch this carefully because it all happens very quickly. What happens it goes into the bootloader it reads the firmware file off the flash drive, which is plugged into the back of the radio here, and then it's going to erase the current firmware from the uh, radio, and it's going to upgrade to the new firmware,
then it's going to reboot into the new version. On the reboot, you're going to see just after, just after the reboot on the splash screen, you'll see it will display the version ID at that point. So don't blink, it's going to come up now. Now writing the flash, reboot in the new version 085. So that's it, that's the firmware update process. I think you'll agree it's a pretty slick process. There's no special hardware. All you need is a USB memory stick, which are very common lying around everywhere. There's no special uh, software required at all. All you do is copy the new file onto the flash drive and plug it in the back of the radio. It works on any operating system, Windows, Linux, Mac, anything that can copy files onto USB, which is basically everything. So I hope you enjoyed the video. After that short break, I'm going to have to get back to working on that firmware I was talking about.